and I don't think there's any oil left in this thing, so that's kind of concerning. I should at least be able to smell that nasty gear oil smell. There we go. Oh yeah, there's oil. Oh God, please don't run out of the pan. Oh God. All right, so we have to pull this motor because either way we're gonna have to rebuild it. Um, if we take this motor, we can rebuild it to 48 volts and get like a 20% boost, which is about 20 miles an hour, which really isn't good enough. Um, or we can get a 48 volt motor that fits on this and boost that to 72 volts and that could bust the axle if you're not careful but I mean it's going to be an off-road vehicle so I'm hoping at least 48 volts um, that would be pretty sweet so I'm out of cardboard unfortunately but we are gonna have to just be a little more careful conservative I guess with the rust penetrant now it's like 90 degrees out, but there's a good wind blowing, so I'm trying to get this done while the wind's blowing. Um, basically, the motor, it's really, I don't know, there's different ways that they attach these. Um, sometimes the bolts will come in through the motor up front and then bolt to this. Sometimes they'll be inside the motor and bolt in and sometimes they'll come through the back and bolt in and I actually don't see how this motor comes off um, it looks like there's big freaking bolts that are coming through the differential but if I have to take the differential apart that's gonna suck because it won't go back together without a new seal and I mean that's a lot of work so I'm gonna try to take the calf off the motor at the very least and see if we can figure out what's going on in that aspect. My toolbox needs to be reorganized. And this thing has like metric and American or it's just like really poorly. It's an 11. See I just don't understand why you use an 11. I feel like it's supposed to be American. But take this out carefully. We have to be really careful with this because these motors are not cheap. Even like a completely destroyed one on eBay is still 100, 200 bucks. Like this thing is worth 200 just by sending it in as a core to get it rebuilt. Or I don't know if they actually rebuild it, but I don't, I don't know. I do know they paint it and they put a handle on it. They do all kinds of stuff. Um, I mean, I guess it wouldn't be too bad to get a 48 volts. It is a prototype, but 48 volts wouldn't be very fast. I mean, it could have plenty of torque, but it's the speed that I'm worried about. This is a real-time video. There will be no time lapsing because it should be a pretty short process. And I will pause the video whenever I run into an issue and have to kind of curse and think about it. And <laughs> okay, yeah, these are just like caps. These are these are not structural bolts whatsoever. Now these are also an issue. Um, they're busted off. The motor definitely won't run the way it is. I don't know if it would even run before I started working on it. But we. Carefully removing this stuff. Really good with this hand. <laughs> oh, it's so wrong. So wrong. I'm a bad person. Alright. Ah. Anyway, so those had washers on the back of them. That's interesting. I think they would have lock washers instead of just regular washers. Hmm. Unless somebody repaired it wrong. We'll find out.
this one's got a washer on it too, so it's a little odd. Usually when you don't want something to come off, you don't put a washer on it unless it's like a hinged item, in which case it would be free. And this obviously doesn't move free. Now we do need to loosen these somehow. They're definitely... I screwed these up pretty good. I'm not too worried about it because all this copper is all nasty and old and worthless anyway, but... One half. So one half. Again, I'm switching between metric and American pretty frequently on this thing. It's starting to get annoying. Okay, that's already loose. Okay. So now this one needs to be loosened. That's off. This is loose now. Okay. Just stick that back on there. And the breeze is slowing down. That's concerning. have to be loose for this to come off so that's loose now and one more and unfortunately these aren't labeled <laughs> but I'm sure if the motor got rebuilt hopefully they'd put a label back on it or at least give me some kind of diagram or you know visual cue as to what it goes where In it. There we go. It's really easy to screw up a motor when you're putting these wires back on because these are attached to the big copper coils and if you screw up, you screw up. I mean, yeah, this is going to be an issue because aside from the fact that I don't have a hammer anymore, this thing is rusted solid. Might have to let it soak for a while. I wish I had some cardboard. I don't know what happened to my... Well, I guess I used it all. It just got so nasty and used up. Let's see if I can... So put this hardware over here with the rest of my hardware. Ah. Okay. Kidding me. There's screws here too. These might be the screws that actually hold it on. That would be pretty weird. And they're flatheads, so that's very concerning considering how rusted out this whole thing is that they might not, they might just break right off and then I'm screwed. Nope, nope, they're turning. Okay, that's very lucky. Very, very lucky. Well, that was a small, whatever that was, I'm not too sure because it just, very, very short threads, very short threads. Come on, come out of there. One more. I don't know if this has anything to do with getting the cap off or not. I just heard something move inside like a magnet popping. Maybe it was holding something on that was supposed to stay attached to the cap. I'm not sure. Come on, come out of there. Come on. You know you want to. You want to be free. There we go. Okay. That back with our parts. Alright. Okay.
does not help to not have a hammer anymore. That's for sure. It's moving, but not enough. <sighs> I have a bad feeling I'm gonna have to actually go inside the differential to undo this motor. I'll get back to you guys later. All right, so it turns out that the only models that are the uh, perpendicular mounted motor are, are mid-1986 and older. So we actually kind of got stuck with an older motor than we had originally wanted. However, I would go as far as to say it's probably a stronger transmission because that because there's a pinion and there's the differential and that's it. There's no extra gears that can um, get in the way of reliability. Don't know how much grease is in this, so I put this pan down. Luckily, it was just kind of laying around. So I'm gonna do this a little at a time just to loosen them up to start with so I don't accidentally screw up the mounting surface even though it'll probably have to be go through some serious cleaning process before I can put a new gasket back on which obviously will be way after the motor is refurbished which could be months and months because I have no money still owe my dad money for this golf cart so These are pretty short headed. Just incredibly nasty. Dirty. I don't even know if there's any, you know, oil remaining in this after all these years. Who knows? allow me to inspect everything and decide whether or not I want to weld the differential so that it's um, locked permanently basically which would be really really good for hill climbing and stuff just really bad for turning and the place that we would use this at which is St. Joe or really any state park does have a lot of sharp corners so it probably wouldn't be the best idea to weld it it's unfortunate there's no way to create your own custom locker or anything. That would be so cool. I guess if you had independent rear brakes, you could technically lock one axle and put the power where it needs to go. I know a lot of really, really expensive rock crawlers have independent brakes and things like that that they can use. So that might be one option to explore is having a uh, adjustable brake system. Of course, if I lock the rear differential, then I would be able to implement a traction control system. That would be kind of cool. That limits the power um, of the, how would you say? It limits the power of the controller, the speed controller, by determining whether or not the front wheels are spinning at the same speed as the back wheels. Although that would be some pretty serious programming to pull that off. Kind of unfortunate even the dc speed controllers once you get up past 48 volts get extremely expensive um, i'm looking at upgrading this 36 volt motor to a 48 volt motor which is basically as high as they recommend going they don't recommend 72 volts because that could blow out the 36 volt motor which is kind of sad because they have 48 volt motors that can take 72 volts so if I could find a 48 volt replacement, which I highly doubt because it's got this really, really old style and I think they were all 36 volt back in the day. So I'm kind of probably out of luck in that perspective. So I don't know. 
the guy that I talked to, I've only talked to one company, he said it's possible but like to make this a 72 volt motor, but he doesn't recommend it and he probably wouldn't do it just because it wouldn't be very reliable. And I emailed him back and I was like, all I need is 100 miles out of this as a proof of concept, you know. Um, but I don't want to break the axles by putting too much torque on them. But, I mean, we'll see. We will see. So now, the, uh, the other the problem is, is I don't have a hammer. I mean, not having a hammer kind of sucks. So we're just gonna... Yeah, this, this baby's seized on there pretty good. Really good. You know, 20 years of rust and decay, and who knows if it'll ever come off. Yeah, it's gonna be a problem. Ah, hmm. Wonder if this has anything to do with holding it on, or if it's just a uh, drainage plug. And I don't think there's any oil left in this thing, so that's kind of concerning. Because I should at least be able to smell that nasty gear oil smell, and I'm not. So that's concerning. The problem is getting this freaking cover off, especially again without a hammer or any kind of sledgehammer. A lot of people said they had to use a five pound hammer to just kind of gently tap everything off. Ah, this isn't going to be fun, I can already tell. I don't want to crack this metal. I don't know if it's steel or cast iron. My assumption's steel, but I have no way of knowing. It looks like a very... Very fragile cover. There we go. Oh yeah, there's oil. Oh god, please don't run out of the pan. Oh god. Oh, thank god it doesn't smell like normal gear, gear oil does. That is definitely not gear oil though. That is way too thin. Either that or it's just 20 years old and completely destroyed and ruined. But this is gonna have to go out into the yard to prevent from getting all nasty. Okay, so that's sitting out in the yard. Whew! Man, I hope I don't have to take this whole thing apart just to get the motor out. That would piss me off. Oh wait, nope. Yeah, no. It looks like the axle looks good. It looks like it's in good shape. The bearings feel pretty smooth. Very hard to turn though. I don't know if welding the differential would do anything or not. Probably wouldn't be a good idea to fuck with it. it seems like it's in good condition. I don't see any chipped teeth or busted out teeth. I mean, it is just 36 volts, so it doesn't have much power to begin with. Yeah, everything looks fine. That's good. Very, very strong teeth, too. The question is... Wait a minute. I still don't see how the motor comes out. Don't tell me I took this rear cover off for no reason. Oh man, I'd be, I'm gonna be pissed if I took this cover off for no reason. And it needs to be cleaned out anyway, but I don't see where the bolts come through. Oh my God. I, I did this for no reason, didn't I? Uh, oh man, that's not fun. So how the hell do I get it's gotta be this cover over here. I've gotta have to take off this cover somehow. 
I'm still not seeing how though, and I'm starting to sweat, and I really didn't want to get sweaty today. Uh, okay, I just gotta breathe, find a way to get this cover off. Let's see if I can coax it. And people keep texting me. Ah. Okay, so lift it off the ground. This cover's got to come off. There's no other way at this point that I can see that this would work. There we go. There we go. There she is. Ooh, those armature brushes don't look worn at all. Damn. This motor has some nasty, nasty dirt in it. The bearing's still good. That's amazing. After all this time, that that bearing would still be good. It's absolutely astounding. Yeah, you can tell. You can see where I accidentally broke off the... Yeah. Yeah, this definitely wouldn't hold 72 volts. It would burn the fuck up. I'm sure you could rewire it with some much better copper wire and get it to run 48 at least. This is our armature, also called a rotor. This is, I don't know if you can even rewire something like this. I don't think you could. I don't know if this could ever run 72 volts. Again, 48, but a 48 volt motor running on 72 volts is so much more powerful. The armature looks good, there's no damage on it, it's just really dirty. The uh, place where the brushes go doesn't look bad either. The spline is nice and healthy, there's no chips in it or anything. It's filthy dirty though. But the coils, oh the coils of wire, this is a high speed motor. There's, God those coils would definitely burn up if you tried to put any kind of oh yep and there's those bolts they're inside the motor i should have known better nice big fat spline for mounting other motors if i could ever find one but i doubt it i'm gonna have to find somebody who will wire this for 72 volts for me it is a very small motor i don't know if we'll ever get enough torque out of it uh, i don't know it'd be nice to be able to replace the motor but rewiring it might be easier. I could even do it myself if I really had to. Now let's see. Um, we need that. And we need this ratchet back. So yeah, it's much lighter now that it's not. I'll use this one to keep it off the ground. I don't know if this is the right size or not. Probably not. Yeah, it's not. It's a little bit bigger. This is a one half, and it's probably a nine sixteenths. I would say. Let's try nine sixteenths. See if that's the size we want. Yes. Okay. So, staying American at least on this part of the job. Okay, no rust in here. That's good. It shows the motor's got a nice seal to it. I would definitely have to preserve that seal very carefully when I would put it, like say when I put it back together, I'd probably run some silicone or something to make sure it's 100% sealed from the elements. Now granted, if you're running 72 volts, you might have to have like some big old heat sinks on it or something since it wouldn't be air-cooled like most of the high-performance motors are. But you can't air you can't fan cool, sorry, not air cool, fan cool. You can't fan cool an off-road electric motor because you'd get all hell of shit uh, deep down inside of it and that would be bad. I don't know. Wish I could read the tag. It's so worn out. So I would Wow, those are really small. Somebody put thread tape on them. 
Wow, those are really small. They look all rotted out too. That might be bad. Bad sign. They are very, very short. I just don't see why they would be so short. You definitely have to get some grade 12. Oh, fuck. It's hot out here. This is the last thing I'm doing today. You definitely have to get some grade 12 bolts to replace this because these are obviously just completely destroyed. I have to get myself a milkshake for a reward for doing this out here in this. Ooh, no. Did I just... Oh, shit. No. Did that just snap that? Oh, fuck. Fuck, no, you did not. I swear to God. That just broke that out. I am in trouble. Stupid ratchet, come on. Oh my God, that is... Ah, oh, I pulled the threads out. Somebody didn't put long enough bolts in this thing when they repaired it. There is no way that those are long enough. Oh, the seal is destroyed. It's like a piece of glue. Oh man, those threads are trashed. Shit. Oh, and I'm leaking oil. God damn it. Okay, the motor's out. It can be sent off to rebuild once I somehow save up 200 something dollars for it. Those threads are absolutely destroyed, but obviously these are not the right bolts because the threads go like all the way back to here. So somebody fucked that up. Especially that one, that one's really messed up. I'm gonna have to clean up that oil. And luckily, all the bearings are good and you can see it spins much easier when you turn it from the right direction, of course. Um, so it's definitely, let's see, if we do half, let's see, how many, how many half turns does it, that'd be a quarter turn, wouldn't it? Quarter, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, man, I wasn't paying attention, all right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, about. So divided by 4 would be, well, let's say 12. Divided by 4 is 3, so 3 to 1. So 3 to 1. Does that sound right? I don't freaking know. I'll have to count the teeth and then do the math like that. Anyway. I need to stop ranting and clean up this oil. Whew. Oh man, look at that. That's, that's not fun. See you guys next time.